Hey guys, we are going to continue reading Kitten Taming today. So let's get started. All right, so we are starting with Kitten Grooming. Picture of an orange cat that looks kind of like Baxter. Back up this. It's a little too close to me. Okay. All right. Well-groomed kittens. Keeping clean. Cats are fastidious about their personal appearance and grooming themselves, and other cats comes naturally to them. The process removes loose hairs, unlocks tangles, tones the muscles. I didn't know that part. I forgot about that part. And promotes relationships and social groups. Short-haired cats. Use a soft brush or hand glove to remove any loose outer hairs from the coat of the head and back. With a fine tooth comb, groom from head to tail, moving with lie with the lie of the fur. Then change direction and comb against the lie of the fur. Turn the cat over so that his head is on your stomach or knee or your knee. Turn him gently and slowly by taking his trunk between both your hands. Now groom your pet's underside as before. Uh, if you wish, rub the fur with a damp cloth or camos leather. Okay. Um, helping your kitten groom himself will prevent the formation of fur balls in his stomach and strengthen the bond between you. You can buy combs, brushes, and grooming gloves in well-stocked pet shops or from your vet. Begin grooming sessions as soon as new kitten arrives. Introduce your kitten to the interaction involved in grooming gradually. Create positive associations with grooming by holding short sessions every day with plenty of tasty food treats. As your kitten grows older, you can decrease the frequency of the sessions. For short-haired cats, grooming twice a week is sufficient. Long-haired cats, however, need daily attention. Pos position your kitten facing away from you if he isn't used to being handled. I try to brush Baxter once a week. Um, that seems to be enough to keep like the shedding at bay and he, he likes it now. So I, we don't really need to do treats, but I will, I will brush him cause he is due and I'm going to be, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll brush him for you guys after I read this next part. Okay. So then for long haired cats, so backs are short haired, um, brush the cat along his head and back with a soft brush following the lie of the fur, repeat several times, and then reverse the direction, moving from the tail towards the head. Untangle any knots, especially behind the ears, the tummy, the groin, groin, and under the tail. Turn over the cat and groom his underside, following the brushing by thoroughly combing both with against the lie of the fur, with and against the lie of the fur. Brush some talcum powder into the coat and brush it out immediately. Polish the fur with a hand glove brush, damp cloth, or chimos leather. Okay, so I forgot all about when we did Katniss that you have to go head to tail and then tail to head. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try that with Baxter today for you guys. Um, you can also rub the fur with a damp cloth or camos leather. Interesting. Moving with the lie of the fur, then change direction and comb against the lie of the fur. Okay, so we're going to try that. Okay, Baxi boo. You're going to be on camera, baby. All right. So this is the brush we use for Katniss, and now Baxter has it. So this side is supposed to do the shiny part of the coat, and this side is just supposed to do regular grooming. Baxter, I'm going to groom you a little differently today because I read some instructions that I think are gonna help, I guess. Go boy backs. Go boy smuggler. Okay, let's do your stomach. And your tail. Okay, and then I'm supposed to go backwards. This seems like it would doesn't annoy him. Okay, it annoys him a little. You're not used to that, I know. Apparently, I've been rushing you around, buddy. This stuff's only getting more hair. Okay, so then we got to go the opposite direction here. 
Empat, Pak. Sorry, Rexy. Okay, guys. Lots of extra hair that I normally wouldn't get going the opposite direction. Okay, back. Now we're going to do the shiny coat side, and then you're done, okay? Okay, go back through, please. Good boy, Baxies. Good boy, Bax. Okay, well, now we know we've been brushing you not efficiently. So I'll work on that next week. Okay, Bax. Thank you, honeys. Thank you for letting me demo on you. Okay, guys. <laughs> you want to be part of the video still, Smuggler? Okay. All right. So that was, so these are the pictures of the grooming process for long haired versus short haired. And we will continue on. Bath time. Now, for some fun, your kitten may need bathing if he gets some oil or grease on his coat that cannot be groomed out in the normal way. Bathing should be a last resort because most cat cats hate getting wet. Baxter is unique. He actually likes the water, but we have not really given him a bath other than just playing in the ocean and in rivers and stuff um, and the lake. Uh, some oils such as the aromatic ones put in heaters to make the different and anything containing pine oil, fennel, or cressel chemicals such as disinfectants and some wood preservatives are toxic for cats. It's not just that they might ingest them, but trying to lick them themselves clean, lick themselves clean. These substances are also absorbed into the body through the skin. If you find some oil or grease on your kitten's fur and you don't know how long it has been on there, it has been on there, or if you are concerned that the cat may have licked it, call your vet for advice. If you know the substance hasn't been on his fur for long and you are sure the kitten hasn't licked it, then bathe him following the instructions here. Use the sink or washing up bowl in a warm kitchen or bathroom with all doors and windows firmly closed. Put a rubber mat in the sink so that he does not slip. Throughout the whole process, be sure to give your cat lots of love and attention and continually talk to him in a calm and affectionate tone of voice. If your kitten objects to being bathed in this way and you are unable to wash off the substance, then take him to the vet immediately. Okay, overbathing. While some cats can become accustomed to regular bathing, you must take care not to do it too frequently. Overdoing your pet's bath times can remove the natural oils in the skin and dry out the coat. Ensure you always use a mild shampoo, pet shops, stock shampoo, especially for cats, or a mild baby shampoo can be used. Okay, so three steps they have on here. First step, fill the sink with uh, or washing up bowl with two to four inches of water at a temperature of about 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Lift the cat by placing one hand under his bottom while you hold the back of his neck with your other hand. Hold him down with your hand on the back of his neck. If he starts to struggle, then hold his scruff. Okay, two, step two, use a sponge to wet the fur all over except for the face and then rub in some cat or baby shampoo to produce a good lather. Rinse the cat thoroughly using a shower attachment if you have one or alternatively a cup filled with water. Step three, remove the cat from the sink and wrap him in a large warm towel. Gently wash his face with cotton wool dipped in warm water. Many cats will tolerate the use of, of a hair dryer on a low setting at this stage. Once the coat is dry, comb it through. Okay, so these are the pictures of bath time. All right, kitten a la carte. Feeding your kitten. One of your roles, your primary role, you might think now that this fantastic kitten is in residence, is to be a provider of good 
healthy meals. The problem is that you are also expected to provide meals that are an that an often fussy kitten considers tasty. Choosing the food, your kitten may continue to enjoy the type of proprietary food onto which he was weaned before you met him, and all you have to do is keep on buying it. I have known cats that have thrived for years on eating nothing but the same basic food week after week. These cats are, however, few and far between. Most cats prefer variety and expect their human staff to provide ever-changing menus, um, your kitten's basic diet and later the one you offer your adult cat should be one of the nutritionally balanced proprietary foods of which there are many on the market. There are three basic types, canned, dried, and semi-moist. All three types are formulated to contain correct amounts of proteins, fats, minerals, and vitamins, but each type has disadvantages. Canned foods have a high moisture content, and some vitamins and minerals can be lost in unconsumed water. Dried foods don't spoil in warm weather, but some cats find them unappetizing. Cats sometimes completely dismiss semi-moist foods, little and often. Kittens have tiny stomachs, and can digest only modest amounts of food at a time. At six to 12 weeks of age, they need no more than two or three spoonfuls, than two to three spoonfuls of food four or five times each day. Gradually increase the amount of food and reduce the number of feeds to two or three a day when they are between three and six months old. Cats that spend a considerable amount of time outdoors will need more food than mainly indoor cats. It is normal for cats to want to nibble grass. Allow them to do so as it helps them regurgitate any fur in the stomach. You can buy trays of seedling grass for indoor cats in pet shops. Something to drink. Water must be available at all times. You can offer your kitten milk, but milk alone is no substitute for water. Some cats are intolerant of cow's milk, because their digestive systems lack the milk sugar digesting enzyme. And you can buy special milk for cats that does not contain cow milk sugar. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a little bit. So these pictures of the two kits. Um, so I'm just going to show you a little bit. Okay, we're still kind of talking about food. So maybe I'll hold off on that. Okay, we'll keep reading. Okay. Running the restaurant, waiting on your kitten. When you have decided on the menu that will be on offer at your cat's cafe, you must now consider how you should organize its service to be best suited to the needs of your kit your kitten. Establishing a routine. After he reaches about six months of age, your kitten should be given three meals a day. If you ring a bell or tap the fork against the bowl or even call his name as you put the dish down in its usual place, he will quickly learn the significance of the signal and come running. So I have an alarm on my phone um at 7 a.m and 5 p.m and it goes dun 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 so vax knows that that tone and he knows it's it's time for breakfast or dinner it's time to eat so i make like a big fuss about it and like i sing the song like with the like alarm going on so that way Bax gets like excited and he knows it's time to eat and he's gotten so used to this sound and then he I think like his, his body's just kind of adjusted to now that he's on a routine. He knows his two times that he eats a day. But before that, especially when he had to switch because he got diagnosed um, with feline lower urinary tract disease. So he has to be on special food now. And the one we had to switch it to a calming version because the other one was making him very hyper and anxious all the time. Um, but I'll, I'll show you guys his food in just a second. Okay, so such a system also helps reduce fussiness in feeding. Your cat may, of course, come to recognize other food time signals, such as the click of the refrigerator door or the rustling of a food packet. After 15 minutes, take the dish away. If it has not been touched, cover it, put it in the refrigerator, and offer it again later. Cat food should always be served at room temperature, as some cats will quickly regurgitate cold food. When you remove food from the refrigerator, you can either wait for it to warm up before serving it or put it in a non-metallic bowl or dish into the microwave for 15 seconds. Check that the food is a safe temperature before serving. Clean, clean water. You might have noticed that your cat sometimes drinks from puddles of dirty water in the garden, or he might even attempt to drink from the toilet. All this, and you never let the water bowl run dry. This sort of behavior is often caused by the cat's dislike 
of the chlorine in tap water. You can overcome this by storing tap water in a large glass or plastic bottle at room temperature for a day or two before offering it to your cat so that the chlorine has time to dissipate. Of course, if you are really fancy, and I know no owners who do this, you could often offer bottled still mineral water. Some cats like to drink from a running tap. And if you are feeling generous, you could buy him one of the recirculating cat fountains that are now available. Cleanliness. It is vital that all food dishes are thoroughly cleaned at least once a day and that the water bowl is kept full at all times. Do not uh, wash your cat's bowls with your own utensils and cutlery. I do not actually wash his bowl that often, um, just like when it looks dirty. But, okay, so I think I showed you guys this before, Cat uh, Baxter needs this, and this actually looks pretty gross, so I should probably commit. Um, He uses this, the maze feeder, because he eats too fast sometimes. And then I have um, this thing I fill up and fill with water in there for him. And then he has to get one-fourth a cup twice a day of his special. So I measured and just like drew a line with instructions of how much food he's supposed to get. But this is the food he's been eating because of the, his, uh, his disease. So it's multifunction urinary, so calm, um, roll canine. So it's like a prescription thing. We get it at the vet. You can also get it online, which we have not ordered it online yet. We've just been ordering it back. Don't go in there. Sorry, buddy. I know I shouldn't have left that open for you. Baxi. No, it's not time to eat. I'm just showing you your food, honey. I'm sorry for the confusion. Sorry for the confusion, Bax. Okay. All right. Um, back to this. Fussy eaters. Foiling finicky felines. Cats can be per pernickety, fatty, and fussy over their food. Many owners must sometimes wish that they could take their cats to the supermarket every morning so that they can choose for themselves the flavor of the day from the abundant choice displayed on the shelves. How are you doing, Snuggler? Okay. Um flavor on the shelves. Cats appear to change their tastes every day because their owners wrongly assume that if their pets are not offered some new delicacy, they will starve to death. Some cats succeed in bullying their poor human slaves into undertaking a never-ending search of the shops and the expenditure of surprisingly large amounts of money. Variety is best. There are some fussy cats that would rather eat only one kind of food and nothing else, raw minced meat or cooked fish, for example, but this will not provide your cat with a healthy diet because single foods like these are not balanced nutritionally. Raw mints, for instance, lacks sufficient calcium and other minerals and also possesses the risk of salmonella food poisoning. Too much white fish in the diet can lead to a deficiency in vitamin B1. All cats must be given a balanced proprietary cat food. Try two or three brands by all means and introduce them gradually into their meals. One thing is certain, your cat will not die from starvation. Signs of ill health. You must, of course, make sure that a cat that suddenly becomes fussy over his food has not got health problems. Some gums, loose teeth, or the accumulation of masses of cal calculus on the teeth can interfere with eating. Inspect your cat's mouth regularly and carefully. And if you are in doubt, seek veterinary advice. Cats that are convalescing after an illness, such as cat flu, can often lack much appetite. Try tempting him with something he does not normally have that has a strong flavor. Some cats love sardines in tomato sauce. Others prefer a meaty treat. Fickle favorites. Of course, one reason your cat appears to be a poor eater is that he is dining out with the neighbors. It's quite possible that someone in your road is accustomed to the arrival at the back door every day of a friendly kitten, which they imagine lacks a good home and well-stocked larder. This kind neighbor always has a bowl of chicken pieces or some canned tuna ready for the feline visitor. Parapetic. Vagabond cats of this kind are quite common. 
cat maintenance. Kittens need servicing. Just like a car, a cat needs regular maintenance. It's a good idea once or twice a week when your cat is happily snuggled down on your lap to give him a simple health and condition checkup. Doing this will allow you to identify developing problems early and is also an opportunity to carry out simple servicing procedures. Okay, so I do not do this very often at all. Um, he was just at the vet yesterday, so they kind of did all this for him. But I'm going to read them and then show you how to do them and like relearn how to do them myself because I don't do this probably enough. Um, okay, so they talk about... Okay, they don't actually show that, but I'm going to show it. Um, okay, ears. Look inside the ears to check that they are free from accumulated greasy material or flakes or ear lining. If you find any such stuff, clean the ear by gently screwing a twist of a cotton wool dipped in warm olive oil into it. The presence of dark colored wax may indicate ear mites. Never use cotton buds. Okay, so we're going to look at Bax's ears. Come here, Baxie, do. Boop, boop. Okay, Bax. Got very hairy ears. Let me check. I'm not seeing anything, but again, they checked yesterday for everything, so. Okay, teeth. Carefully open your kitten's jaws and look inside the mouth. The milk teeth should be clean and white. The gums pale pink and healthy, and the breath should not smell. His breath smells quite often. Um, if you do find anything that worries you, seek professional advice from your vet or humane society without delay. So I usually brush his teeth once a week when I brush his hair. So we'll brush his teeth today too. And then I'll just check his teeth. Um, so I have, it's basically like the oral uh, toothpaste for pets. They like emphasize dogs on it, but I've used it for cats and I've heard you can use it for cats. So I use it for cats. Um, where is that smaller toothbrush? So I have, it came in a pack with like two toothbrushes and Bax doesn't really like the big one and it's kind of overwhelming in his mouth, but I'm not seeing the small one, which is probably why I keep using the big one because I don't know what happened to the small one. It, we also have this, um, uh, no brushing drops to put in their mouth to kind of freshen breath. Um, yes, I'm not seeing your, your little toothbrush, but I'm only seeing this one. Oh, that smells good. Because I'm not seeing it anywhere in here, buddy. Well, darn. You moved so much in the past, like, year. You must have lost it, Snuggler. I'm sorry. Well, we're going to have to just keep using this one, I guess. Or the just the oral breath thing. Okay, so this is a toothbrush. It's preferably for dogs. There was a better toothbrush for the cat in there, but apparently we lost it. Okay, back to you. <laughs> he does not like his teeth brush. Up, up, up. Whoop, whoop. Okay, come here. Come here. Open. Go by, lick it up. Lick it up, Bax. I wish you guys could see him right now. Let's go over here so that I can see you. Okay, 
So we got one side, we gotta open up and do the other side. And then lick it up. Good boy. Okay, bottom, bottom buddy. Bop, bop, bop. Picks. Open up, please. I know, I know. It's uncomfortable. Hang on. Back. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Good boy. All done. So is this. No more. I rushed you and I did that, so I'm done. I'm done picking on you, Baxi. I'm sorry. I'm done picking on you, buds. I love you. Thank you for letting me get that done. Oh, you knocked the book down. That's what fell. I was trying to figure out what fell. Okay. All right. Coat, which we kind of did while we were brushing him. But begin by checking the coat while you... Great. Okay. Begin by checking the coat while you run your hand through it. Are there any bad patches or crusty areas of skin? Are there any tangles? If there are, loosen them with your fingers and use a comb to separate the hairs. Um, if your kitten is snoozing, he will probably not even wake up while you do this. Look to see if there is any of what looks like fine coal dust on the skin. This dust is the droppings of fleas and it's easier to find than the fleas themselves, particularly in long-haired cats. Okay, so we use... Uh, Revolution Plus. So it's so it has it's a six single dose tube. So it kills fleas before they kill before they attack kills ticks for. Okay, it's, it's like all covered up by the prescription thing. Shoot. Okay, so it kills fleas, kills ticks, prevents heartworm, treats and controls ear and hook worms. And so that is, it's basically just one of those like solutions that um, comes in these little things. You cut them out and it's just like a little liquid drop that you have to just kind of separate um, his, his fur so you can see the skin sort of, it goes directly on the skin. So I've used, we've been using that for a while now. Um, Bax has been using it for probably six months. I didn't start the treatment right away with him because we didn't do that with our first cat either. And I think someone told me not to do it right away. Um, like you're supposed to wait till they're, they, can, they can't be super young when they get it, but then someone else told me you can't. So I don't know. Um, but we started, I think at six months with him and then we do it every month. Okay. Eyes and nose. Now check your kitten's eyes. Uh, they should be clear and his eyelids free of mucus or matter with your fingers and the help, if necessary, of a little cotton wool dipped in warm water. Remove any crusty deposits from the corners of the eyelids near his nose. Are his nostrils clear and free of discharge? Is the nose pad dry and crusty? If so, pat a little Vaseline or petroleum jelly on it. If your cat suffers from a cracked, chronically sore nose pad for more than a couple of weeks, seek veterinary advice immediately as it can become incurable. Okay. Oh, no. Not the vet. Vets aren't cats' favorite people. Your newest family member must, sooner or later, be taken to the vet, and your job is to make the visit as free from stress as possible for all concerned. Okay, absent without leaving. Perhaps cats do have telepathic powers because they frequently seem to know when it's time for them to be taken to the vet and they promptly make themselves scarce. Is it a case of them reading their owner's mind or do they understand when they hear you say, I've got a 10 o'clock appointment for Tabitha at the vet this morning? Uh, veterinary colleagues tell me that people often cancel their cat's appointments or simply fail to turn up without phoning to let them know because they cannot find their pet. A cat that can normally be found snoozing in the greenhouse between 9 o'clock and noon um, each day and every day will be inexplic inexplicably missing 
uh, on the day of a visit to the vet. One vet in London has stopped making any appointments for cats because of so many missed appointments getting there. Assuming, however, that your cat is present and correct, there are a few things to remember. Make sure that the cat is familiar and at ease with the carrying box well before his first meeting with the vet. If the first trip apart from the one when you initially brought him home is to the clinic, he may come to associate car travel and his carrying box with unpleasant experiences. Oh, I forgot, guys. Also, we, for part of his training and just daily stuff, he also gets, now I'm all he also gets uh, Granny's Dental Chews, catnip flavor, um, for usually daily. I try to give him these, um, but it cleans teeth, freshens breath, and it's just the, the Greenies uh, for cats, basically. Okay, first vaccinations. Phone to make an appointment at a quiet time if possible and arrive promptly. If you have to wait a while before you are called to go into the examination room, it is far better to keep the cat in his carrier in your car rather than in the waiting room where there will be fri the frightening scents and sounds of other animals and humans. If he was not already vaccinated before coming to you, the first veterinary appointment will be for these all important shots at the same time time, you can ask the vet to check the kitten's overall health and take the opportunity to discuss such procedures as neutering. If your kitten is going for a second or a, for a second or booster shot of vaccine, don't forget to take the vaccination certificate with you for signing and dating. Keep your cat's vaccination certificate in a safe place because if you ever have to put your cat in a cattery, you will need to present it. Okay, stress-free visits to the vet. Familiarize your kitten with his carrying basket or box well before the first visit. Take your kitten for short cat journeys, car journeys, once or twice before his first visit uh, to the vet so that he is used to the car. Make an appointment at the clinic at a quiet time if at all possible. Arrive promptly and keep the kitten in his carrying container in the car until you are called into the examination room. If your kitten has already been vaccinated, take the vaccination certificate with you to the appointment. Okay, you and your cat. So... How much time do we have here? One, we're at 32 minutes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to try to go through these guys. Okay, you and your cat. Sorry, I think I missed giving you guys pictures. Okay, so this is for the, the ears, the teeth, the coat, and eyes and nose and i'm pretty sure i showed you guys this is just a cute picture of the cat so it wasn't like anything with instructions or anything and then this is the vet visit one um actually i think we're gonna hold off on you and your cat um i don't know i can't decide guys um let's let's just we'll read through it you and your cat okay pay attention cat chat Cats talk a lot, not just by vocalization, but also by means by of their body language, facial expressions, touch, and behavior. By listening to and observing your kitten, you will become an expert in his own special language. Cats' voices range from angry screeches, hisses, and spitting through complaining wails and plaintive meows to seductive and contented purrs. Experts recognize 16 different vocalizations, and many cats utter a special zaza sound when they spot a bird. Body language. A cat's body language is highly expressive. The ears of an aggressive cat are pricked and furled back, and the cat carries his tail low and close, bristling and swishing it. A defensive cat, on the other hand, arches his back and turns his body sideways with the tail arched and bristling. A submissive cat cringes close to the ground, ears and fur flattened, and his tail thumping the ground. Pay attention to your kitten's head. The ears will be held erect and pointed forwards. When he is alert, 
and interested, but they will be flattened against his head when some form of confrontation occurs in an aggressive animal. They are usually presented with a forward rotation, but will be folded down downwards and sideways if the cat is seeking to avoid trouble. A cat's tail language is particularly eloquent. A slow, graceful sweeping indicates contentment. An upright tail, particularly when the tip is bent, signals friendship and is often used together with body rubbing. Another indicator of friendly intentions. Rapid tail move it, movements commonly accompany a, agitation and emotional stress. Cats use touch as an important means of communication with other cats and with humans, as well as sensuously, 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 sensuously rubbing, I'm giving up, their bodies or pressing their noses against us. They bump us with their foreheads in order to express their affection or most frequently to indicate that they want something, usually food. The eyes have it. Your cat's eyes convey messages too. The eyes of defensive and submissive cats show dilated pupils, although large pupils are also displayed by excited but unfrightened cats. <clears throat> As, for example, when they are playing, the pupils of an aggressive cat narrow to vertical slits. Slow blinking of the eyes is a sign of happy, of a happy and relaxed cat. Cats that blink directly at their owners are often seeking reassurance. Avoid staring unblinking eye contact with your cat because he will find gazes of this kind, whether from humans or other cats, disturbing and potentially confrontational. So these are some cat photos. Cat confidential. Stop talking to your cat and listen. All cats have several rather sophisticated ways of communicating with one another and with the humans in their lives. Although some of these are so subtle that humans cannot register, far less understand them. Reading the signs. Some cat signals, like scent deposits, are impossible for humans to understand. Although we immediately recognize the strong, unmistakable smell of tomcat urine, left to tell everyone that this is the top cat in the neighborhood, our feeble noses cannot even pick up the smell of the more subtle messages that cats leave by rubbing and scratching, let alone understand what they mean to other cats. We can, of course, tell from a cat's behavior when he is cross. If you tread on his tail, for example, he will make his feelings perfectly clear by hissing or screeching. If he has been particularly offended, then a quick bite or scratch of your leg will gain your, immediate, your attention immediately. There can be few owners who don't learn to recognize that their cat is hungry when he goes to stand in the place where his food bowl is normally put down and stares first at the bowl and then at you. His tail goes up and if you are in the kitchen and open the cupboard in which you keep the cat food, he will rub or bump against you to encourage you to open a can or take down the packet of his food. Old green eyes. Cats can be possessive of their owners and can display jealousy at times. In a household with a new baby, for example, it's important to continue to show your cat the same level of attention and affection that he enjoyed before the baby's arrival. They can also be jealous of other cats in a household and will show their displeasure if you lavish attention on the other cat by being touchy and standoffish with you, sometimes growling and going away when you call him. It probably makes him feel better if he whacks the other cat and perhaps bites him, but you need to be aware of the potential for this type of behavior in a multi-cat home. You can avoid displays of jealousy by remembering that your cat is a senior member of the family who was in the house before the other cat or the baby and give him extra love and feed him first, treating him, in fact, as you did on the day he first arrived in your home. Cuddle that cat. Close encounters of the kitten kind. It is important that your kitten becomes accustomed to being handled from an early age. Handling hands-on contact with your cat is a crucial part of establishing a great relationship between the two of you. Some cats enjoy being picked up and cuddled, but they must feel comfortable and secure. Follow the instructions here and remember to always handle your kitten gently and with respect, avoiding grabbing him or over fussing him. Sorry, guys, did I show you? I feel like I showed, maybe I didn't show this to you. Okay. 
Um, over fussing him, picking up a kitten, resist the temptation to pick up your new kitten at each and every opportunity. You must let him have the time and space to do what he wants to go and explore or to have a little snooze. Young children in particular can cause problems in this regard. Never pick up your young cat by the scruff of his neck and don't lift him up under his armpits and let him dangle. Getting hold of a cat by the scruff of his neck is, however, acceptable as a way of lifting a cat that has suffered an injury to his body, particularly a fractured limb. Kittens always need to be handled carefully because their bones, particularly those forming the rib cage, are very soft and are easily damaged by rough uh, handling at an early age. The correct way is to place one hand around his stomach and the other hand under his bottom. He can then be set down on the palm of one hand while the other supports his head and upper body by gently uh, holding him around the neck or under the front legs. If you are carrying your kitten anywhere, hold him close to you. Sit down with your cat in your lap, give him a cuddle, and he may be well and he he may well have a snooze. However, if he does not want to be handled and feels like playing, never drop him from a standing height. Set him down gently, give him a stroke, and offer a food or toy treat as a reward for his good behavior. Carefully pick up your kitten in this way several times a day to accustom him to being handled. Picking up a cat. As he grows older, you can pick him up by placing one hand under his front legs and then scooping him up by pushing your other hand under his rump. Then bring him up to chest level, all the time supporting his weight by keeping one hand firmly under his hind, hind quarters. Once up, he can sit in the crook of your arm with his forepaws, either resting on your shoulder or held in your other hand. And with luck, you will hear the soft thrum of a purr in your ear. A little respect. The new arrival of a soft, furry ball of fun is met with delight by children, but it is very important that they are taught how to handle their new pet so as not to fright or injure him. Show older children how to pick him up and demonstrate the gentle way of stroking, not patting, a cat to toddlers who may be over-enthusiastic in their attentions. So here are the photos for those guys. Okay, have four left. Your kitten needs you. The foibles of lap cats. You know how it is. You have your kitten on your lap, all's well with the world, and then for no apparent reason, he begins to need your tummy as if it were a lump of dough. He might even bite you gently or prick you with his needle sharp claws. Why does he do this? Showing affection. Your cat's needing behavior is an expression of affection that harks back to the days when he lay against his mother's warm body and pressed on her mammary glands with his paws in order to stimulate her to let down her milk supply. Some cats also dribble in anticipation at the same time, and this action is usually accompanied by a purr. So if your kitten suddenly gets the urge to give you a pummeling, let him get on with it. Um, biting is a different matter and has to be stopped. The cause may be the cats attempt to attract your attention or it may be the result of a so-called petting aggression. Cats do not go in for lengthy grooming sessions among themselves. So a nibble or two on your hand is your kitten's way of signaling enough's enough. Stop it now. If your cat's claws dig into you when he is engaging in a kneading session on your lap, train him to retract them. Stroke his paws lightly with a finger until the claws retract while saying gentle cat in a soothing tone of voice and adding his name. When his claws are retracted, praise him warmly and offer a food treat. Keep repeating this simple training whenever appropriate and almost certainly he will learn to keep his claws in. It usually takes a week or two, although some cats will need several months to respond to the training. All that is needed is patient repetition and rewards of words of praise and food treats. Okay, so I'm going to show you. I say gentle paws when we do it. If his if he starts to scratch um me when he's like on me or pet it, like holding me or whatever, snuggling with me. Um the kneading thing, sometimes I like roll over on my stomach when he's doing it so he does it on my back cuz it feels really good. It feels like he's like massaging my back when he does that like kneading thing. Okay. So, Baxi, I know your claws aren't retracted right now, but can we just show them something? So when they come out, you just rub them and you say gentle pause, gentle pause, and they go back in. 
Okay. All right. Teething. Sometimes a kitten between the ages of three weeks and six months bites you, and this could be because he is having teething problems. When teething begins, give your kitten suitable objects such as the special cat shoes and cat chew toys that are available in pet shops and online. Encourage him with praise to chew on them and dissuade him from trying out his teeth on your body by blowing hard in his face when he does so, not by slapping him. So you just go right in their face. Um, that usually works with backs pretty well. And I do that if he if he hisses at me too, um, because I, I don't want him hissing at me. I don't like that. So um, okay, so this we found this, it's like a very like rubbery toy. Um, he chews on this if he was having chewing things or if he if he just feels like nibbling on stuff and I don't want him nibbling on me, I will I'll just replace it with this. So that works pretty well. Okay. What's happening? Okay, got three left. No, okay. What's happening? Why does my cat do that? You've introduced your delightful new kitten into your home, but just how much baggage has his mini tiger brought with has this mini tiger brought with him? Did you expect just a cuddly ball of fur, a fawning? ever eager to please playing like the little puppy that lives next door, solitary hunters. It cannot be said too often uh, that cats are not dogs. Dogs are pack animals. And when they were domesticated, they treated their human families as a new kind of pack. Cats are fundamentally what they always were, solitary hunters. Your kitten may have the bluest of eyes and possess a passion for canned tuna, but beneath his fluffy coat lurk the instincts of the wild cats. He will naturally ambush songbirds in your garden and bring in frogs as presents for you. Cats use a number of communication systems among themselves, and when he is out and about, your cat will revert to the role of a lone predator. The messages he sends to other cats are designed to avoid conflict and confrontation, and they are intended to enable him to stay fit and uninjured for the business of hunting and moving from place to place matriarchal societies. Although cats are solitary hunters and individualists, wild cats, feral cats, and cats that live in multi-cat homes tend to adopt a matriarchal society where the top dogs are females at certain times for sexual activity or when they are out and about in territory that may or may not have been claimed by another cat. They obey the hierarchical rules of feline society. Research has shown that within groups of feral cats, Social life is based on a network of grandmothers, mothers, aunts, and daughters living as a unit with outsiders unwelcome. In your home, if you have a number of cats, they will also establish a matriarchy in which unneutered outsiders are unwelcome. Multi-cats cat households are best composed of related animals. If you bring non-related cats into your home, introduce them with care and patience. Rubbing both of other cats and humans demonstrates affection and respect and acknowledges relative status. Status is very important in cat society. Indeed, cats could be seen as class conscious, conscience. Mutual grooming among cats strengthens the relationships and is a method of exchanging information between cats through tastes and smells. Wise owners understand these... Sorry, I don't think I showed you guys these pictures from the one before. I'm getting bad at this. Okay. Um, wise owners understand these relative roles and accept that the relationship they have with one cat is different from the relationship they have with other cats. Tensions between our cat and ourselves must not be allowed to develop or your cat will simply withdraw into himself, become aggressive, or leave home. Okay. Your cat and you. Your cat as as in-house psychoanalyst. Uh, you got yet, uh, yet another impressive skill that your kitten will be able to demonstrate is as a detector of the moods of the people with whom he comes in contact. Your body language. Cats are adept at observing human body language and they quickly learn to relate to the various tones of voice of their human companions and to their moods. They are 
Okay. They are also extremely sensitive to human body odor. The chemical balance in human sweat changes according to the person's mental state. The phrase, the smell of fear, is a common one. And it is true that perspiration, perspiration, sorry, smells differently depending on a person's mood. Whether they are feeling amorous, fully relaxed, or scared stiff, your cat's highly sensitive nostrils are better than yours in detecting any order changes, and he will react to you as appropriate for your mood at the time. But I don't like cats. You must often have heard someone from outside your family say when your cat goes amiably over to them, how peculiar. I'm not a cat fan, but they always come to me. I have found this to be a common occurrence in people who, if not actual cat haters, are at least not fond of them are often greeted by a cat more warmly than people who are cat enthousi enthusiasts. One possible explanation for this lies in the eyes of the human beholder. People who love cats tend to stare, hardly blinking at a cat to which they are introduced. People who don't care for cats just... Um, People who don't care for cats just look at them with indifference, continuing to blink normally. As we have seen, cats take an unblinking stare, whether human or feline, to be confrontational, a possible sign of impending conflict, and they prefer, at least on first meeting, a disinterested and therefore unthreatening gaze. When you are having a close encounter with your kitten, remember to blink slowly and more frequently than you would normally do when you gaze into his eyes. When you blink, the kitten will generally generally blink also. Cats as landowners. All right, guys, this is the last section or the last page of this chapter. Cats as landowners, your kitten's territorial rights. What's mine is mine, and don't you forget it, says cats in their own uh, in, inimitable way. The boundaries of their territory, both inside and outside your house, are precisely marked out and clearly indicated to other cats living in the vicinity. Cats mark out their territory by erecting signposts of both a visible and a smellable nature to other cats. Scratching. Many people think that when a cat scratches things with his claws, he is simply sharpening them. Certainly, Scratching keeps the claws in tip-top condition, but this is not because the process brings them to a needle-like point, but rather because it removes the old, blunted outer claw sheath to expose the glistening new talon beneath. Uh, another function of scratching is to exercise and strengthen the muscles and tendons of the feet, keeping them fully prepared for action, whether that is doing battle or simply climbing the garden fence. More importantly, however, scratching leaves a visual signal of territorial rights to the other cats of the neighborhood. In addition, when your cat is scratching, scent glands in the paws release a secretion that gives an additional off, off olfactory signal. Scent signals. Your cat leaves three types of smell signals, urinary, fecal, and those from skin glands. Your cat urinates deliberately when he is marking his territory and can do so no matter how much urine is in his bladder. Surprisingly, the urine spraying routine follows an unchanging pattern. The area sprayed and the number of squirts never vary. Spray marking is normally but not exclusively done from a standing position so that the urine is deposited at nose height, which means that it can be instantly detected by passing cats. Cats of both sexes, neutered and unneutered, spray mark. When, as part of his natural bowel function, your cat passes motions, he will always try to bury the droppings by scratching with his hind feet. When the droppings are deposited as territory markers, he will make no attempt to cover them up. Typically, these malodorous calling cards are placed on the tops of fence posts or, more embarrassingly, on your next door neighbor's lawn. When he rubs against you or other animals, your cat leaves the scent produced by his skin glands. This identifies the object he has marked and indicates his status to another cat. Rubbing you is a way of showing contentment and acknowledging his relationship with you. Okay, guys, that is it. Next up, we'll be talking about growing pains and kitten school 
and some other things. So that's it for now. We are not super, I'd say we're like, eh, maybe a third in. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye.